Hey friends, it's Miss Hoffman. I am here to show you another art project that you can do. This is an optical illusion heart that can be any shape. It doesn't have to be a heart. They look really cool with circles. They look really cool with trees. But this is an optical illusion heart where it looks like the heart's popping off the paper. It's curved. It's popping off the paper, casting a shadow on the paper. If you're not into hearts, here's another one of a hand where it looks like the hand is popping off the paper. I made these samples so you can see them. So my hand's a little bigger than your hand would be probably, but you can see where the hand is popping off the paper. I'm gonna teach you how to do this. And it's a pretty simple technique, but it's one of those techniques that look really difficult. You can watch this video and do it, and then you can impress everybody with your awesome art skills and you don't have to tell them it was easy to do. All right, so in this one, we're using a lot of elements of art and a lot of principles of design. You can see we are obviously using lines, which is one of our elements of art. We are using shapes. We are using colors, and here I'm using some contrasting colors. We'll review what that means in a second, and that just helps the heart pop a little bit more. Um, we are using value with our, with our shading here to make it look like it's standing off, and then we're also using repetition, which is a principle of design, and pattern, which is a principle of design, contrast between our colors, which is a principle of design, and emphasis, where we have one area that's supposed to look like it's standing out. We also have balance, where it's the same on both sides. So, whole lot of elements and principles of designs that we've learned in class, all in one picture, which is pretty cool. Good review for us to do while we're at home. Now, what I'm gonna start with is a shape. I could do any shape I wanted. A tree would be fine. A flower would be fine. I'm going to stick with that heart just because it's an easy shape to do while I'm drawing sideways. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to draw a heart. I drew it a little bit close to the bottom of the paper just so I don't have to fill in the whole thing so you can see what I'm doing. Now, the trick to this, the, if you want to keep your lines far apart, it looks cool. If you want to keep your lines close together, it looks cool. So I made sure to make a sample one of each so you can kind of see the difference. I'm gonna keep my lines about medium distance from each other on this one. In the background, the lines absolutely need to stay straight and horizontal. Now I do not have a ruler, so mine not, might not be perfectly straight, but I'm just gonna do the best I can. Remember you can, if you watch my farm video, that I posted, my tip was to, if you don't have your ruler at home like Miss Hoffman doesn't, you can use an edge of a piece of paper, I find a piece of like a cardboard box that has a straight edge like a cereal box, but uh, I don't have my ruler, so I'm just gonna be doing it by freehand, but feel free to use an edge of something as your ruler, but make sure it's something that doesn't matter if it gets marked on. Also, my tip here, I would do all of this in pencil first and then trace or outline with your black marker because if you're doing it straight with black marker like Miss Hoffman and you mess up, it's just messed up and you have to start over. So Miss Hoffman's taking that risk so you can see better what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna do a straight line and here's the thing, when I get to the heart, I'm no longer doing straight line. I'm gonna do a rainbow arch shape and then I'm gonna continue my straight line. That's gonna give it the curved pop out effect. So I'm gonna do it again. Straight line, stop. Curve line, like a rainbow arch. Straight line. Straight line, stop. Curve line, like a rainbow. Continue. Straight line, stop. Curve line, like a rainbow. Continue. And you can see it's starting to make it look like it's a curved object. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster and try to fill this in a little bit faster. Excuse Miss Hoppin if her lines get a little crooked. I don't have a ruler and I'm drawing sideways so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep it pretty neat. All right, now I'm gonna show you what you do when you get to the top and this would be important if you did one of your hand as well. So once you get to the top, you can see how that's looking. Once you get up here to the top and you filled all this in, when you get to two sections, you would have to go straight line curved, straight line in between, curved, straight line in between. And then you would fill in your whole paper like this. Now, once you get done, you need to choose what colors to color in your picture. Of course, you can leave it black and white like I did the hand drawing, but I think it just gives it a cool effect when you color it in. 
We talked about complementary colors in our optical illusion yesterday. Complementary colors are colors across from each other from the color wheel. So we know our primary colors, our secondary colors, our warm colors, our cool colors, our neutral colors. We've talked about those in class so, so much. But now we're talking about complementary colors. Complementary colors are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel and they contrast, which means they're going to stand out really good against each other. Now, if we mix them together with paint, they're going to turn brown. So we might not want to do this with paint because if they get too close together, they're going to smudge and turn brown in between. But this would be good for our coloring. Now, yellow and purple, orange and blue and red and green are all contrasting colors. Of course, black and white would be good. Now, I wanted to do something a little different. So you can see I chose magenta and seafoam green just because I love seafoam green. But if you look right here on my contrasting colors at the bottom, magenta is pink, right? And pink is a tint of red because how do we make pink? We add white. Seafoam green is a tint of green because how do we make seafoam green? We have, it's, it's green, mostly with some white. And so I have a tint of red and a tint of green, which is still contrasting colors. So I have my magenta and my seafoam green, which contrast each other. You could also pick any bright color and any dark color, and that would also contrast if you don't wanna do the exact ones on the color wheel. Now, to do that shadow in the background, let's pretend this Hoffman's is all done and all colored and we're just skipping to that step. I've got a crayon, but it would also work with a black color pencil. We probably don't wanna do this part with marker, but uh, because it would be hard to kind of give that blending effect. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna press hard. Now you would color the picture in first. You would do this on top. So I colored all of my magenta and all of my seafoam green. And you can tell I did the black on top. So I'm gonna press hard next to the line. Hard, 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 hard to make a nice dark line. And then I'm gonna soften a little and press a little less hard. Just like when our, we're practicing our shading, we press hard to make it dark, we press medium to make it a little lighter, and then we press very lightly and delicately to make it light. We've learned that in class. All right, so I'm gonna press a little bit lighter and then a little bit lighter, and it's going to show dark then medium, then light. And I did all that with the same crayon just by how hard I pressed. And we have learned that when we've learned value and shading. Remember value is lights to darks or darks to lights. And we've learned that when we've done shading. So I pressed again, if you missed it, if you were looking down for a second, I pressed really hard. Ooh, I broke my crayon. That's how hard I was pressing. I pressed really hard to make a dark line. Then I press a little bit lighter in the middle, and then I'm pressing super light around the edges, super light around the edges, and it gives this cool shadow effect. When you're completely done, your heart is gonna look like it's lifting off the page and casting a shadow on the page, and we have an optical illusion where it looks like it's pulling off the page. Same thing with my hand picture. We have an optical illusion, and to do this hand, I simply laid my hand down and traced it with pencil. Don't trace your hand with a marker because you're gonna end up with a marker line all around your hand, and we've been washing our hands enough. We don't need to try to scrub marker lines off for an hour. All right, so we're gonna trace our hand with a pencil then you can outline it with a marker and then you can do all your lines and notice I kept them really close on this one and this one I kept them a little farther apart so you can see the difference I hope you do this I saw lots of cool pictures yesterday posted on the different uh, school Facebook pages and I would love to see more artworks posted from you guys because I love to see what you are making and creating and it doesn't have to be this anything you make or create share with me I'd love to see it thanks miss you guys bye